So we had a new person join Archipelago, right? And so we ran a new setup. We got a new test. They're playing a game that we weren't sure how it was going to work. Uh, they were playing Terraria, the new person, to the uh, playthrough. And let me just show uh, the spoiler log here. So everything looks fine. Everybody's got their, their stats and stuff. Um, there's mine. But let me get to the actual, um, actual spoiler log, yeah? Locations. And this includes all of the, uh, stuff that stayed vanilla. You have a bunch of stuff from garbage. A bunch of stuff from, uh, Klombach. Some stuff... Uh, who's next? Some stuff from Leg. And then... There's Palu with his Sonic Adventure. Sonic Adventure is a pretty heavy game. And then we get to Spooky. Right? And now, we're at a minute 20 seconds of this recording. And this is all still Spooky. And this is all still spooky. And this is all still spooky. Oh, we're still in spooky mode. Okay. And this is all still spooky. Nope, we're, okay, and then we're finally to me. Which, by the way, my Kokiri sword was vanilla. Anyway, uh, we did the, the, the math on that, and it turns out he had like 1,700 checks more than anybody else. So, uh, it was real bad. It was real, real bad. I'm glad that we got it all sorted out now, for the most part, on what needs to be, uh, fixed, but jeez, <laughs> I'm glad that we didn't like all like sit there playing until everybody finished and only just played around a little bit and then there's a command to send all of your checks to people probably for if you have to either drop out or finish the game or whatever. Um, but jeez, that, that, that was bad. <laughs> that was real bad. Hopefully it doesn't, uh, remain that bad in the next run. The, like, the, the main run, the one that we're gonna stream. So you see I have a video done here. There's a new Vinny Visits. And it'll obviously be out by the time you get- I'm on the wrong channel. Hang on. There's a new Vinny Visits coming. It'll be out by the time you see this. But I played the demo for uh, Princess Peach Showtime. It's actually a pretty good game. Uh, I have a clip saved, so I'll play that here. To be continued. I'll be the round. Okay, what are we doing here? But honestly, I'm looking forward to this game. When it first was announced, I was like, oh, this looks cool. And then stuff keeps coming out about it. And I'm like, oh, this is actually really nice. And then I saw the demo came out and I was like, oh, I'm gonna play that right now. And then I recorded it, did the video visits, and now it's ready to go. And as soon as it's done processing, it'll be out. All right. Cool. So, back when I, um, back when, uh, N64 came to Switch Online, I started playing through Super Mario 64. Uh, originally it was a 16-star run, and then I figured, you know what, let me 100% the game. And every once in a while when I don't have anything else to play, I'll boot it up, grab a couple stars, and, and then I'm like, okay, you know what? 
I'm almost done. Let me just finish this off. I had less than 10 stars when I started. Or less than 10 stars left when I started uh, today. So, that was my last star. And I feel a lot better. So now I'm going to go beat Bowser and then add it to the list of games for the, for the year. But, uh, you don't have to binge a game straight through. You could just chip away at it occasionally, especially if it's something you've played before. And this is a nice reminder of that. So I'm gonna keep this brief, because I don't really have a ton to say, because it's not as big for me as it is for Ben and Patrick. Um, today we got the news that the creator of Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, and Dragon Ball Super, um, passed away. <laughs> he, um, Akira Toriyama, in creating the Dragon Ball franchise, inspired a lot of people, inspired a lot of creations. Some of my favorite, I enjoy Dragon Ball a lot, and it, some of my other favorite properties were also inspired by Dragon Ball in some way. Whether it be through um, art style, through references to it in storytelling, in character design, character arcs. It just, uh, one, it means a lot to a lot of people, and two, it, it led to a lot of inspiration. Hell, if he didn't put in work on the on the characters for uh, Dragon Quest, it may not have had the reach that it did. So even in the video game space, his his work had a lot of reach. So it it's definitely a a heavy loss for the world at large, the entertainment industry at large. So it's. gonna be a rough loss. So I did a stream today, and that stream was a very different stream. Um, it's been a bit since I had people on stream with me, and um, today I had a huge group uh, with a handful of folks. I did a multiplayer multi-world randomizer um i've talked about it before and today was like the big day we did the full playthrough and i learned a lot um i definitely need to tone down my settings for Ocarina of Time Randomizer. Um, I need pretty much to make Ganon's castle more accessible. Uh, because the way that Archipelago works is once you're done, you can release all of your remaining checks to whoever else is available to play. And depending on what games are going on, you might have a point where somebody is going to be fully stuck and left to do absolutely nothing. So the main goal is to get, have fun obviously, but get, be able to finish your game as quickly as possible. And I was not set up for that. So I need to, to pretty much tone down my settings to make that more doable. But also, I streamed for a lot longer than I usually do. I streamed for seven hours, which is like a double length stream for me. Uh, I don't mind doing it. In fact, I do quite enjoy it, but I, um, I don't get too often, so I'm very not used to it. So I'm a bit tired. 
but it was fun. And everybody else seemed to have fun, except for one person. Uh, but it is definitely something I will do again. I don't know if it's going to be with the same group. I don't know what games are going to get played. But it definitely is uh, something I'm interested in, in messing with again. Anyway, I am tired and the clocks are about to spring forward. So I'm about to lose sleep. So I'm going to start heading to bed. I gotta think today. This screwdriver. And you might ask, what is this screwdriver for? It's for this. Which I have from one of my coworkers. He ha asked me to take a look at it because this button is working fine. This button is stuck. So he asked me to open it up and see if I can get it working. Also, he was having trouble where it was crashing randomly. So I figured I would see if I could figure that out as well. Okay, I got most of the screws out and the battery out. So I just gotta do these last few things and then I can open it up. This is for the cartridge slot and these are for the outer shell. And here's the battery. Okay, I got it open, right? And I'm looking at it and it does definitely need cleaning. The focus is not cooperating. That's not the focus. This is the focus. Okay, so then let's zoom. So, you can see that this is now pressing, but it definitely needs to be cleaned. So let me grab something to clean it with. All right, I cleaned it up a little and now I'm gonna clean. I should have cleaned the shell before I put it back on, but uh, it's fine, I'll clean it now. But otherwise, it should be good. So I got it all together again. And some of the time it doesn't read cartridges. So you see I have Luke Green here. And I have a file that's pretty early on, so there's nothing like in the save file that could have messed with it. But all I'll do is press D-pad right. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe only while I'm holding. So what was happening was that I would hit D-pad right and the game would crash. There you go. At least it seems to be. Yeah, no, like, no crashing. Okay. And the L button is not stuck. And the R button is not stuck. I think this thing is mostly functional. Which is very good. Cause that means he, uh, can play his games again. Hello and welcome to Monday. I'm very tired. Um, I think I talked about this yesterday, but in the, towards the end of the day, the, um, the, the time change started to catch up to me. So I got about the same amount of sleep as I usually do. But I'm more tired. <laughs> I don't know why. But we have a guy coming today because we're having issues with the oven. So he's gonna come take a look at that. So me and mom are gonna try to get the um the kitchen presentable. <laughs> so that might take a few. So we had a guy in. And he looked at the, the stove in the oven 
and he determined, okay, this is broken, needs to be replaced for one of the knobs. The, uh, the threads got kind of fucked. <laughs> so it's like, that's gonna happen as you're constantly turning the damn thing. Um, then the hinges on the door are worn out from constantly being opened and closed as we're using the oven. Again, normal wear and tear. Um, one of the uh, burners was not, um, one of the, a couple of the burners are not working. And he said, yeah, that's probably due to, to buildup of grease. So that's, that's gonna be, need to be like unclogged, cleaned out, whatever. Um, and the, the way that he put it was the ignition for the oven was not like igniting to, to, to heat your oven. Cause we were having an issue where we couldn't even get the thing to, to 350 in a reasonable amount of time. It took quite a while. So we paid him for coming in and inspecting, figuring out what's up, what. And then he sent off the information to the insurance company so that they could review it and be like, cool, do what you need to do. The insurance company decides, no, this is from abuse, which is absolute bullshit and infuriating because how are you going to say that a home stove, home oven that gets used on a daily basis to feed a family of five is being abused? <laughs> like if we like smashed in the door, maybe, or, or like shattered the knob, but it's not the actual knob itself, it's the threads holding it onto the thing. Uh, so, we appealed, and we're waiting to hear back. But this is fucking infuriating, because how are you going to say... Again, again, how are you going to say that a thing going through normal wear and tear, normal use, is being abused? Why, why do we have this insurance if they're going to say, uh, no, fuck you, the first time we have any actual issues with one of our appliances? Uh, so I'll keep you updated on, on how this goes, but this is like, oh, I'm, I'm like shaking in anger right now. I spent the last few hours trying to sleep, finally start to fall asleep and have a weird dream and wake up. And in the time that I've been sitting here, laying here since I woke up, I realized I never ended the vlog. Um, so I'm just going to stream work tomorrow, 5 a.m. Tired. Towards the end of the day, I was, like, feeling very lethargic. Not, like, fevery or, or like, sick-y, but definitely very lethargic. And that's confusing and concerning because, like, I don't know what's causing it. So I tried to lay down to get a little bit of extra sleep, and, uh, I had a weird dream. And I woke up, and my heart was racing. So I'm like, hmm. Whatever happened in that dream? Because I, I do remember, like, the general outline of it. But whatever happened in it very much confused me. And then I was like, huh? and then like panic and whatever. I don't know, dude. Anyway, I do have to go back to sleep, but I wanted to end the vlog. So, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you get yourself a damn good one. And I'll see you next week.